So um, I'm talking sort of under Paul's pretenses, uh, because this work essentially is in line, but maybe time might be looking here, so I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, so my name is Chris George, as it says, I run an open source project called Waterbase, which started off as what still is an attempt to provide uh, free open source uh, tools and data, mainly for people in developing countries. So I started that when I worked at the United Nations University when I was based in Macau. But as I said, this, this work is really uh, belongs to David Tarbutton and his team uh, in Utah. And uh, I've uh, used mostly his foils, as you probably noticed, you can tell, because they're the, uh, the attractive ones. <coughs> so I, I expect most of you an idea of what watershed delineation means, but it's, it's summarized on this slide. You start with the digital animation map, that's just a grid where the numbers are the, uh, the height of the land. And uh, in order to do the calculations thereafter, you have to avoid circularities, which means if you've got little holes, which otherwise the water would appear to drain into, that are just basically faults in your elevation map, you have to uh, flatten them out a bit, so that's called pit removal or filling. And then you can calculate where the water will flow, and then you can calculate where the streams will be, and which uh, point will drain to which stream reach, and so on. That's a, essentially what watershed delineation means. You start with just a digital elevation map, no other inputs, and you end up with the thing on the far right showing where the streams are and the areas that they were draining to extreme reach. Um, now one of the challenges uh, is that uh, digital elevation maps are getting much, much, much bigger. And uh, so the files, if you want to delineate large areas, also get very large. And we have to, uh, to manage that, which means you need uh, a lot more memory and a lot more speed. And that's partly what uh, Talman 5 is about. So Talman 5 makes some uh, assumptions about the DEMs. It will only uh, run on uh, GeoTIFFs, uh, but it can run on very large ones. This is about three orders of magnitude bigger than the previous tab, I think. Um, it assumes that the, uh, the cells represent square areas. Uh, so they're identical in stems and so on. And it's, uh, it doesn't care about the projection or the location. So the spatial reference is ignored, which is lucky actually, because that's a sensible thing to do with a tool that other people are going to be using. You can uh, deal with that separately. So going to that window, we made it, did a couple of things that, so first of all, it, since Tower uses GeoTIFFs, we don't expect our users to have to convert their own map, so that's done, done on the fly. And you say, this is the DEM I want to use, then it, uh, map window checks to see if that's a GeoTIFF, if it isn't, it just uses the tools to convert it. Um, and we do use projection information, so in map window that's all preserved. We assume what we expect and demand, in fact, that the original map has a projection file and then that's copied to all the other files that are generated. And so this is the, the process, the typical process. There are more complicated versions of it and there are some extra tools on the back end. But essentially you start with a, a DEM on the far left, you do pit remove, then you calculate the flow directions, uh, the minimal style is to use what's called uh, D8, Direction. In other words, there's a possible flow um, north, south, east or west, or northeast, etc. There are eight possible flow directions in an adjacent cell. So those are calculated, and then it calculates the, uh, the, the contributing areas. That's how many cells drain into each cell. <coughs> so, for so the number associated with a particular cell is the number of cells that are going to drain into it. Uh, so that's the contributing area grid, and from that you can calculate where the streams will flow, 
because the calculator can decide a string needs a threshold number of cells draining into it, maybe 300. So any point up from 300, and of course the, the cells that that one drains into necessarily would be at least 300 and so on. So you, you decide that's where the streams are. And you have to, of course, to make a judgment, or there are some tools that help you try to calculate where you'll get simply water flowing over the land and where you get it, the stream actually appearing. Um, so that depends on the threshold, which is the only other input shown here, the only thing in blue. And from that you can calculate all the stream reaches, and there you know, in fact, which stream reach uh, any particular cell will drain into. And that gives you the boundaries of what are called the, the sub-basins. So, if you look at the um, automatic watershed delineation form that you have in the, uh, the latest version, at first glance it looks exactly like the old one. So I've tried to keep the user interface very much the same. In fact, there's only two things that have appeared on here, which is two, uh, two values at the bottom, which I'll talk about in a minute. The number of processes and the, and the show output tick box. So we still have the burning option if you know where your streams are, and particularly if it's useful if you've got a fairly flat area where automatic tools make basically a guessing. Um, then you can burn in the stream, which is just a trick. You just <coughs> reduce the depth of the DM along the line of the stream, and then you do all the calculations, and lo and behold, where you reduce the level is where the stream appears. It's very clever. Um, so this form gives you a simple opportunity to give a, a manual uh, threshold value and it suggests a value for you as it used to. You can define where the outlets are, so you say I don't want everything at the DM I start with, I want uh, a particular uh, basin starting from this point, or this point upstream, so that's the outlet. And you can define inlets, you can define point sources, you can define reservoirs. Uh, so essentially following the process on the, on the previous form, there's an extra bit of processing at the end to make the shape file show where the sub-basins are. So if you just give a DEM and use the watershed delineation and principally will do nothing else, but I didn't do anything else, but I can give the DEM, I use the default uh, threshold, so automatically you will find that appearing. And that's even version 4.8.2 that we have on play. So, what's different then? Well, Tablet V5 is using the, uh, the multi core capability of most computers nowadays. So, probably most of your laptops, perhaps all of your laptops in this room, have more than one core in the CPU. And uh, mostly with single threaded applications, you're only using one of them. And you'll say you're wasting a lot of possible computing power. Uh, but of course, there's, there's some overhead in trying, to, in trying to, uh, to use more than one core because basically tasks uh, don't split very conveniently. Most tasks don't, anyway. Um, so the approach that taken in town in B5 is just used, you're always using uh, uh, geotip maps. So it divides them into, uh, it takes east-west stripes. So if you divide it into three processes, you get three, uh, you get the division of three, and there's a slight overlap of one, one cell, one row of cells, and essentially each piece is given to one processor, and they compute as far as they can, and they exchange the data on the boundary and then they do it again, and they exchange the data on the boundary and then they do it again, and eventually they all agree and then they stop. The precise details of the algorithms, I think, are different for different processes, but that's essentially what they all do. So, of course, there's some overhead to that, because you have to do this repetition. And it probably depends on the I suspect if you had a, uh, a river that happens to sort of curl its way across the boundary at the time, other repetitions might be quite large, but in general, we'll see we'll get some uh, improvement 